Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Thursday, March 11th, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. The models are in and snow is coming. But the big story, Sangay Volcano just exploded to 41,000 feet. Keep calm. It's boom time. Monster storm to bring several feet of snow and tornado threat to the central Craton here in the U.S. Take a look. Here's the latest snow and rain totals through Monday, which won't be a fun day for Cheyenne or Denver, where they're looking at two feet or more of the global warming goodness. Winter storm Xylia, a potentially historic blizzard in the Rockies and High Plains, will hit this weekend. What and we, we've, end, we've entered the end of the alphabet for winter storms because that's because we're in spring here. A massive winter storm will strike the Rockies and high plains this weekend. Parts of Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska could pick up multiple feet of snow. The storm could cripple travel down trees and trigger power outages. And that's just to get it started. Strong winter storm is now rolling through the Central Valley of California, bringing hail and much needed rain. And this monster storm could bring several feet of snow and tornadoes this weekend. It's a slow moving blockbuster storm, likely to bring the biggest snowfall in decades to many parts of the front range of the Rockies and Western Plains this weekend, possibly challenging all time records for some cities. On the warm side of the storm, it's the first spring severe weather outbreak that threatens Texas, Oklahoma and Kansas. And we'll be taking a look at all of those models. First, we'll check out the snowfall analysis from the last 48 hours. Hours of powers. The big winner here is, yes, the Sierras. Well, they're looking at 30 inches in the last 48 hours. The most recent swath of snow coming through Minnesota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Wyoming. Dumping in the last 24 hours. Uh, a big swath of eight inches or so across that region. And more snow is coming. We'll check the models just in a second. There we are. And here you can see your Thursday through Friday. Just a little bit of snow moving into the Rockies. A little bit uh, more snow in the central Sierras there. And then it really kicks up a notch here on Saturday. Take a look. And that's when the big explosion happens in Denver, in Cheyenne, Wyoming there. And then a little bit is going to move east through Iowa, Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, but not quite the totals we were showing earlier in the week. So just a little snow event here. Moving to the east, down into the Delmarva area, Philadelphia. Biggest totals there will be out at, at the West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania area where they all meet right in that area of Appalachia. So heads up there. And the snow is going to continue through March. There's an end of March system that looks to bring potentially heavy snow back into the Sierras, more snow into our region. So we're going to be keep keeping a close eye on the winter, uh, the, the March spring pattern. And it's not just snow we're worried about. We're worried about the water as well. Here's the total accumulated precipitation for the next 10 days or so. That flooding in the Tennessee Valley, in the Mississippi Valley, just at the, the tip here of Indiana, there's going to be some heavy rain, six, seven inches in southern Missouri, it looks like, and up to nine inches of snow water equivalent in that snowstorm, which could, in my opinion, could be six, seven feet in the Denver area, but that's gonna be very heavy wet snow regardless. Major spring storm on tap for the south central U.S. A vigorous storm system digging into the southwest will gradually spread into the south central portions of the U.S. on Friday and this weekend. This will set the stage for a high impact spring storm featuring heavy snow in the central Rockies and Plains, severe thunderstorms in the southern plains into the mid lower Mississippi Valley and heavy rain with flooding in the south central plains in the mid Mississippi Valley. So it will be a boom time. Currently we have frost and freeze warnings here in the blue high wind warnings across New Mexico and flood warnings and watches in that region where that heavy rain is going to be hitting over the next couple of days. Heavy winds in the Delmarva too and most of Virginia, eastern Virginia there, quite windy. Seismic update, no quakes of note, nothing showing in Iceland when that couldn't be further from the truth. Take a look at Fagradlsvall volcano update. More than 34,000 quakes in two weeks on the Reykjanes Ridge. I wonder how many the U.S. downgrade service forgot to report on. It's easily in the hundreds range. Let's open up this image and let's just take a look. The red, wow, that is quite a blow up. 
everything red is greater than three days in the last three days. So we can see the seismicity honing in and focusing on that area where the magma intrusion is going to occur. And it's going to incur, here's the latest seismicity actually coming from the Iceland Met Office where we'll actually get data. You can see in the last 24 hours, there was a 4.5, 4.6 magnitude here and a 3.9 magnitude, a 3.2 magnitude, a three magnitude, 3.2, dozens in the three range here and nothing reported on the USGS. But what we can glean from this information is that the activity is tightening up on Fagradelsfall volcano here, and it is re-emerging and re-chiming in here on the Rakianis volcano. So we may be seeing two events in one, but the first one that's gonna budge here is Fagradelsfall. The lava is near the surface. Now what we saw in the last two days is a huge amount of harmonic tremor. Uh, with a 5.1 centered in the middle of that, and then kind of a breakdown in seismicity over the last 12 to 24 hours. Most recent lull just about two hours ago, but that harmonic tremor has picked back up. We have now had another earthquake in the four magnitude, and it has tightened ever much, ever still, in the Fagradelsfall area. And what they are showing here is the hypothetical position of that sheeted dike that has been emplaced down to the south in Fagradelsfall, it is less than one kilometer from the surface, up to the north here by the Kelil Mountain, which is not really a volcano, it is two kilometers below the surface, and it is being injected somewhere in between the two up into that sheet. So the most likely place an eruption will occur would be on the southern flank of that Rakianis Ridge and go towards the ocean in that direction. There are roads, I believe, in both directions. Don't quote me on that. So we're waiting for that. To emanate and the seismic tremor has returned. There is a lot more to talk about as far as earthquakes and volcanoes. Sangay volcano, this just coming out moments ago. Explosive activity continues. Volcanic Ash Advisory Center, VOC, warned about a volcanic ash plume that rose an estimated 41,000 feet. That's quite a few feet. Oh, I got the wrong one on. <laughs> well, you could still see me. So that is a 41,000 blast nearing the stratosphere in uh, Ecuador, and I'm sure r rattling some nerves. There's some more activity going on around the world, and this is why Congo's volcano watchers are worried. Towering over the Congolese city of Goma is Mount Nyiragongo, home to one of the largest continually active lava lakes. It could also be a disaster waiting to happen. Increased volcanic activity has experts fearing an eruption could be on the way. But the organization that monitors Nyiragongo, the Observatoire Volcanologique de Goma, or OVG, is struggling to make even the most basic checks. That's because its funding has been cut, following allegations of embezzlement. At one of Nyiragongo's volcanic vents, OVG lead scientist Honore Chiraba is taking measurements. Now we are at 0.5%, which means that the magma is not yet rising on this side. The 65-year-old has been regularly climbing the volcano for the past 19 years, a passion driven by fears of a repeat of 2002, the last time Nyiragongo erupted. Then 250 people died and 120,000 were made homeless. Goma's population is estimated to have tripled in the past 20 years, putting more in harm's way. But the World Bank has declined to renew a four-year, $2 million funding program, saying OVG lacked experience and there were weaknesses in implementing such a grant. It added that it could not corroborate allegations of graft, but said it upheld high anti-corruption standards. The grant ran out in late 2020. The World Bank said it was up to Congo's government to continue financing OVG's crucial role. So lesson learned here, if you embezzle money and you don't actually do the science, you don't get any more money. Unfortunately, that's not happening in the US. But let's look at Nirigongo and in the Congo. And, talk, and here's the 2002 eruption he was just talking about, VEI-2. It is historically one of the largest eruptions um, dating back all the way to the Dalton minimum, but they only have data going back actually to the centennial here, 1884. So there's no 
information passed there. And VEI2 might be what was happening prior to the Centennial Minimum during the Dalton and during the Maunder Minimum. So if VEI2 is something that we should be seeing from this volcano two years after the solar minimum, then in 2022, we should see a VEI2 or 2021, which is right about now. So that's what's happening in Niragongo, in the Congo. Now, Nicaragua's San Cristobal volcano erupts and showers the city with ash, which is much better than destroying and displacing 130,000 people with lava, as would happen at Niragongo just two decades ago. Now, the San Cristobal volcano in Nicaragua sees a series of strong to moderately strong explosions. And according to Sinparad, reported that these series of five moderate to strong volcanian type explosions occurred at the volcano between 1306-1332 local time yesterday. The strongest eruption at 125 local time triggered a dense dark ash column to an estimated 8,000 feet. Not that significant, but by, because there's a nearby town and it got showered on them, that certainly is significant. Now, San Cristobal volcano, it bees exploding. And it has a historical volcanic explosive index to three. And here we can see a VI3 eruption back in 2017, August 18th. And so that's what we would be looking for repeating again. VI3 coming from San Cristobal. Worldwide Volcano News Update. We have Sangay to... Well, 41,000 feet, Sabancaya to 26, Cinnabung still quite active, puffing to 10,000 feet, Popo to 20,000. Here's that 41,000 foot explosive eruption from Sangay. And here's some uh, amazing footage of Cinnabung puffing after the massive pyroclastic flow from the active lava dome, second March. The activity of the volcano continues with volcanian type explosions as this one produced dense ash clouds which rose 33,000 feet. That's not, or 3,300 feet, not that high. But we also have some more updates here. Pacaya is seeing more spectacular lava fountains and there is an update on Mauna Loa that I wanna share with you. Okay, bear with me. Things are getting a little weird here. My computer's acting a little weird. It doesn't wanna do stuff. <laughs> So, so there's that. Just does not want to show anymore. Okay, there is a seismic swarm south of Mauna Loa. And I will share it with you tomorrow. Because I just can't get to it right here. We'll just finish this up. Biggest ever map of the universe reveals 11 billion years of history. I have the paper here for you if you want to research it. The completed SDSS IV extended baryon oscillation spectroscopic survey. And the data set. Final BAO and RSD measurements, whatever that means. <laughs> the supposedly oldest impact crater on Earth isn't a crater after all. In fact, it's a scientific fraud where people just pretended it was, submitted the article, and everyone believed them. When actually someone went out to the site to look at it, they said, this looks like everything I've ever seen everywhere in the world that's not a crater. So do your own research and check your work. Is a long dismissed forgery actually the oldest known biblical manuscript? Yes, because this has been going on for eons. People bring out these amazing artifacts that they found from antiquity that don't match anything in the mainstream narrative, and they say, oh, that's fake. It's a forgery. It is a forgery based on my expertise. And then decades, if not hundreds of years later, those artifacts are re-found and, and re-examined. And guess what? This one's real. It's the oldest book from the Bible ever found and is, is excerpts from the book of Deuteronomy. So if that interests you, this article will blow your mind. And that's been su suppressed by, fr from us for quite some time, to say the least. Now, if you are a fan of the cute little narwhal, which is this beaked type of whale thingy here, look at that with this little spike, they may be about to go extinct. And that has to do with pollution. Not global warming, not CO2, which is plant food. Not even the sun. This is just straight mercury in the water, which is now being accumulated in their bodies. And this recent study showed a massive spike starting around 1998 through 2010 of mercury in the narwhal. And mercury is not good for biological life. Now some tips, tricks. How to process soil into clay to make pottery. 
anyone can do it if they have soil. And this article shows you how to high grade that clay in your soil using just a bucket and some water. It's that simple. And then boom, you'd be making your own clay pots. This may be a skill we need in the future because there will be no radioactive China from China in Walmart. Boom! <laughs> Hope you got something out of the video. Tonight, we will premiere the most spectacular petroglyph video we've ever created. We're in a secret petroglyph location uh, on the outskirts of Farmington, New Mexico. And the density and uniqueness of the petroglyphs at this site are mind-blowing. Not only that, it is the highest concentration of Anthony Peratt-style plasma discharge glyphs, I think, in the entire world. So, mind-blown. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons, people that share this video. You guys are all heroes. We love you. Be safe. And that's a boom to knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more of it. And have a wonderful day. Hey, hey. <laughs>